Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can get this vintage Atherin blue box, what I believe is an F7 Reading engine running again. This was a uh, locomotive which was uh, sent to me a while back for repairs. I don't know exactly what's wrong with it. All I know is that it doesn't run. Uh, but it is an old Atherin blue box, and these things tend to be pretty tough. So I believe with a little bit of work, we will be able to get this thing riding the rails once again. But as I said, I don't know what's wrong with it, and there's only one way to figure that out, and that's to take it over to the track and see if we can figure out what the problem is and go from there. So let's begin. Let's take this thing over to the track. So the first step in trying to get this locomotive running again is just going to be to plant it on the track and see what happens when we give it some power. This can tell you a lot about any locomotive that's not running, especially if you have a uh, controller like this with some readouts on it. So we're just going to give it a little bit of power here and see what happens. I saw a little bit of current draw for a second there, but you can see the engine isn't running. And we now have no current draw, which means the motor is not picking up power. However, if we just nudge it a little, uh, we can see it actually is kind of trying to go, but uh, it's barely moving and it's making some weird noises, which isn't good. Uh, the motor was picking up power, but it appears to have stalled, which is really bad news. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, open this thing up and see if we can find the problem. I suspect since uh, the motor was picking up power and it was moving, it uh, is probably a mechanical issue, not an electrical one. But we will find out uh, soon enough once we open this thing up. So uh, let's get to that. All right, so we're now going to start disassembling our locomotive here. This is pretty easy to do on most Atherin F units. You just need to get your nails under either side of the shell and just gently pry up, and the body will drop out as it just did. And uh, this is the same case for most other manufacturers of F units. The only thing I should note is that in some cases you'll have models where you have a coupler which goes through the shell and connects to the body of the locomotive, and in those cases you need to uh, remove the coupler before taking the shell off. But in any case, we're now inside this model and we can uh, have a closer look at what's going on with it. We'll take off this weight right here. And uh, well, right off the bat, I see a couple problems. Uh, first of all, we've got this piece of metal right here. Uh, now this is responsible for holding the brush down. Uh, it might be loose because somebody soldered this and sometimes they melt the plastic, but we'll try pushing it back down and see if it holds and uh, it seems to be so it might have just got bumped out of place but uh, that's already a problem right there because uh, obviously you need to have proper pressure on the spring and brush or else it won't uh, connect to the commutator properly and you'll have all sorts of issues and poor performance with your motor so that's one thing already fixed the other thing i see right here is we've got a, a wire which isn't soldered to this anymore it seems to have broken off and uh, this obviously isn't great either because that means that this motor's only been picking up power from uh, one truck instead of two. So uh, yeah, that's not great. And then the third thing is that the commutator on this model is really dirty. Uh, it doesn't look as bad as some of the ones I've seen. I don't think it's too oily, but it's definitely not clean. And the little spaces in between uh, each of the plates on the commutator are really uh, like they're full. I'm amazed this thing wasn't smoking or uh, shorted, frankly. So those are a few things. Uh, this is turning properly, which I'm kind of surprised by. Uh, this is kind of loose, actually. I thought this was going to be quite stiff. So I think the gearboxes might actually be working OK. Uh, I am wondering, though, why the motor sounded like it was revving higher than the model was moving. And uh, the motor does feel like it's kind of loose. Sometimes the things which uh, seat the motor become uh, broken over time, the little plastic nylon sleeves. So we'll have a look at all of that, see if uh, we have any issues with it. It might be okay, but uh, those are all things to look out for. So yeah, anyway, let's get working on this model. I think the first thing I'll tackle is the commutator, which uh, is really easy on these Atherin blue box models. On some models, you have to remove the brushes, but uh, on the Atherin ones, all you really need to do is just uh, turn the model on its side and uh, scrape them out. And we just uh, do this with something like a toothpick, something that's softer than the metal, because what you don't want to do is accidentally scrape the metal, because that can actually uh, kind of make a rough spot, which will actually sand down the brushes. So yeah, but on almost any model you work on, you want to clean these out, especially if you have a model that's been smoking or something like that. This is often the source, because this will cause a short circuit and very poor performance. So we'll clean those out. They're looking all right now. And then we'll follow that up with this. I uh, usually refer to this thing right here as a uh, 
carbon fiber pencil. It's actually a fiberglass pencil. I just kind of mix up my words a little bit sometimes, but you can find these on eBay and uh, they're wonderful for uh, cleaning up the metal. We'll put a little bit more on this actually and uh, I'll just polish that up and it will take all that nastiness off. So there we go, we've already got that looking way better and this is gonna make the model much more efficient and uh, it's also going to uh, mean that this will last a lot longer because it's not gonna risk overheating the uh, commutator and uh, ultimately destroying the motor. So now we'll open up the gearboxes. This is uh, not too difficult either. Just get yourself a uh, flat heads like this and uh, I usually just kind of get it kind of like that. And you wanna wedge it right under, or I wanna, I wanna do this carefully here because uh, it is an important thing. You just get it kind of under there and just sort of twist up and uh, it will come off and you just lift it off. Remove the uh, worm gear and you can just take that off like so. We can see this is actually turning very well. You can see I'm not putting any weight on it and it's turning. We'll clean it out and lubricate it in any case, but uh, this is actually fine. And then we just do the same on the other side. And uh, this one's been soldered, so we'll have to unsolder it first. And I'm also going to remove it from the motor too, because this wire doesn't look that great to me. There we go. And now that we've got both the trucks off, we'll uh, disassemble those. There's uh, usually a little uh, piece up here you have to remove, and you just use your flatheads to uh, lift that up. Take them both off. There's uh, obviously one on either truck. And just uh, remove both of those. And then uh, for the bottom ones, you kind of go at them like this and you sort of just twist inward a little. So you're kind of going in a, at a bit of an angle. You just kind of turn this a little to get those off. And uh, yeah, there's one. And then once you get those out, all you need to do is remove the wheels. And uh, well, the whole truck is open up. And uh, yeah, when you're in here, you can, uh, you know, lubricate the gears and everything. These all seem very good. I was expecting them to be kind of dirty, but uh, they're all right. Check the bearings, make sure they're all uh, turning properly. And just uh, repeat the process on the other truck. For uh, cleaning any parts up, we'll just put a little bit of alcohol on a tiny piece of paper towel. And uh, this bit right here actually connects to the frame. This is really dirty with grease and stuff like that. Uh, so that could be uh, one electrical, an area where there might be some electrical problems. So we'll uh, clean that up all nice. So we're now going to start reassembling the first truck which we took apart. Uh, if this was really dirty, I would suggest cleaning it with some alcohol. And if it's really greasy and stuff like that, you could take uh, a little bit of dish soap and some warm water and scrub them with uh, all the gears and everything with a toothbrush. But in this case, everything doesn't seem to be too bad, so I'm just going to give it some fresh lubricant and put it back together. Uh, to do this, we'll just uh, put a little bit of oil there, and then uh, all we need to do is get these pieces back together. You can put uh, these back in. I recommend uh, getting a little uh, screwdriver just so you can get the bearings all lined up to get them back into place. Sometimes these can be a little bit finicky. There we are. And then we just snap the cover back on. And we'll do our test. You can see without applying any weight to it, the gears are turning freely. So that means this is all working properly. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much good. Now we just need to uh, do the same thing on the other truck and we'll be in business. I'm also going to put a little bit of conductive lubricant on each of the wheel bearings since they are picking up power. This will uh, make the trucks turn uh, even better, which is great, and will also improve the electrical connectivity on the trucks, which is uh, also a benefit. So uh, yeah, I'm also quickly just going to remove the rust. All right, so we're now going to begin reassembling the model now that we've got both of the uh, trucks working properly. And we'll, uh, to do this, basically uh, just uh, lift this up. I'm actually going to put a little bit of conductive lubricant on the area we cleaned earlier just to uh, make the uh, connection even better. And also lubricate this as it turns. I just want to work that up 
over there and uh, you should just feel it kind of sink in once it's in the proper position. And we'll take our worm gear here, feed it up through there. There we are, that's what we want. And we'll also lubricate both of the bearings like so on the outside. And then for the worm gear, we're going to use a uh, grease and oil mix to uh, make sure that's well lubricated. So now to do this, we'll just drip a decent amount of oil onto the worm gear there, follow it up with decent amount of grease. You want to kind of mix it kind of like for every four parts of oil you put, you want to put one part of grease roughly, something around that. It uh, can be varied a little bit depending on the locomotive and stuff like that. Uh, if you're working with metal on metal parts though, put more grease uh, than you would maybe half grease and half oil just because basically the more friction there is, the thicker the lubricant you want for that particular application. And then we'll just put these both back on. You just get them into place, snap them in, and uh, yeah, just like that, you've got that all back together. And uh, now all we need to do is get the wiring uh, going again. We're going to put a different wire on though because the old one was kind of crap. So uh, yeah, I've already got this wire all configured. Uh, if you want to replace the piece of metal which connects these pieces together conventionally on these locomotives with a wire, uh, always find a wire decent thickness, but more importantly, you have to find a wire that's very flexible because if you find a wire that's too stiff, it can actually cause the trucks to do kind of funny things and they might not turn properly. So you want something very flexible. You also want something that's long enough that there's enough slack that when this thing moves about, it's not going to uh, break off or prevent the truck from moving. So uh, yeah, anyway, we'll solder that up. We'll put flux on each part of the wire here and then we'll grab our soldering iron. Let's put a bit of solder on each of these and also obviously if there wasn't solder on these you'd want to pre-tint them with some solder and you just get a good amount on there for soldering to the motor always do uh, do it in the middle here never do it to the sides because you'll melt the plastic if you do but if you do it in the middle and you work fast enough you shouldn't have any problems with that but I have seen it happen so that's all good this part of wire is actually a little bit too long for my taste, so we're just going to shorten that a little bit. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. Just uh, You don't want too much wire going around there where it could get caught in something. You want just enough wire to do its job, but nothing more. And I uh, already got some flux on here, so we'll flex that up. And uh, yeah, there we go. As for the motor, we will put a little bit of oil on each of the bearings. The back one, you don't have to be as careful with uh, in terms of putting oil on it, but uh, for the one uh, on the front with the commutator, I'd be very careful just because uh, if you get oil on the commutator, it can burn. You can put certain types of lubricant on the commutator, but if you decide to do that, I would put very modest amounts because uh, it can burn and it can get caught in between the plates and cause shorts, so it can be a lot of trouble. So be very cautious uh, on that, err on the side of caution. But in any case, we've got this whole thing back together. The motor seems to be seated, everything seems to be uh, turning properly. So we'll put the weight back in place, put the shell back on the model, and uh, I guess we can take it over to the track and uh, see if it does anything different than it did before. All right, we're now going to set the model up on the track and see how she runs after all that. Find out if our efforts have paid off or not. Wow, look at that. That's pretty good, I think. Definitely uh, running a lot better than it was before. Uh, let's have a look here, too. She's even running efficiently. Check that out. That's uh, a little bit less than most Athern Blue Box engines draw. It could be because uh, it doesn't have a light. That would definitely reduce the current draw by a bit, but uh, still, it's running uh, quite well. And uh, if we uh, slam the power rate down to zero, it even coasts for a decent amount of time too, so uh, even that's working well. So yeah, overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. It's only uh, one more thing I'd like to take care of though, which is that the uh, wheels on this model were super dirty. So uh, I'm gonna show you how you can clean those really easy on these Athern models. Get yourself a little piece of paper towel like that, just cut off a bit. 
get yourself some uh, 70 or 90 percent rubbing alcohol and just drip a little bit of that on there you don't need a crazy amount and then what you do uh, is you uh, run the model onto that and then you need uh, to hold it with uh, yeah how am I going to do this okay in this case for this example because I'm using a camera I'm going to set the momentum but really all you need to do is just hold the model and once it revs up yeah, just let it run on the paper towel for a while at full throttle and uh, this is not something you want to do on just any type of model train because it does uh, take a lot of energy for the motor to do this and if you're not careful you could burn out a motor but most of the time on these Athern Blue Box models you can do this and just let it run back onto the rear truck and even hear it revving up a little bit more and uh, yeah auto cleans itself so uh, that's easy wheel cleaning well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I quite enjoyed working on this old Atherin Blue Box model. The old Atherin Blue Box engines are really uh, quite fun to work on and uh, get running again when they break down, which I don't find is too often. But uh, yeah, in any case, I'm happy we got this uh, model running again. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.